I'll send you the link to it. My sister subscribes to So she should. Okay, this is on the recording, so let's get going before you say something silly. Yeah? All right. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. All right. I think everybody recognizes this as binomial theorem. Therefore, it's a paper one question. So most of you went to do some sort of Pascal's triangle, which I probably would recommend. So I'll just do that very quickly. So you need to be able to do this quite quickly. Uh, 1, 7, uh, 21. This is the important line. 35, 35, 21, 7, 1. Okay, why is that the important line? Because I have an x to the power of 7 here in the question, Isa. So x to the power of 7 means you go to the 7 line. I think the line with the 7 in it. I think you may have gone to the 6. Oh. It's so easy to remember, seven, power seven. So anyway, yeah. Okay, how does that help me? Uh, well, a coefficient of the x5 term. So what way does a binomial work? Uh, the whole thing is that the first term in this binomial, two term by two term expansion, uh, the first term's powers go down, descend, and the second term's power ascend, goes up. Okay, so the very first term in this sequence, you could think about like this. It's going to be from Pascal's triangle. I know the one is in front of it. If I, could, I probably put that too low down. But one, x7, and then k is to zero. That's the very first term. This one will start at seven and go down to zero. This one starts at zero, goes up to seven. I'm not looking for that term, but that is my first term. I keep on going on, and I want to find the one with x5 in it. x5. Okay. Well, that's just going to be two more, isn't it? X, the one before is going to be x6, k1, and the coefficient, which I don't need to know, actually. But the next one is x5, k2. And the coefficient of that one is going to be the third term. So 7 was the next one. 21 was the third one. So 7, 21. It's this. This is what I need. All right. So I know that that is 63. So the coefficient of a term is the number in front of it. So 63 x5 is that term. This becomes that. But I don't have that at the moment. I have 21 times x to the 5 times k squared. Now we're only talking about the coefficients, but what will happen anyway is these x to the 5s don't really matter. It's the number in front of it is the coefficient. So I have 21 k squared is equal to 63. Divide by the size by 21. So that's 63 over 21. No calculator, but maybe you can see that divides in three times. So if k squared is 3, k is going to be plus or minus the square root of 3. So, we got 21 k squared. 21 x to the power of 5, k to the power of 7. So, we got this stack section. That's to be k to the power of 2. Do you have k to the power of 7? No, k to the power of 0. We should have got um, some attempt marks. What did you get? 2. Oh, that's, that's about right, yeah. Yeah, getting this far is about 2 marks, yeah. Getting something close to this is 2 marks. Finishing it off. Yeah. Given two answers, then is another two marks, not just given the one answer. Uh, but yeah, two marks is about right. But you can see how e easy it is to finish it. Okay, that was an easy binomial question. Did anyone get it? I don't think anyone got it. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. Um, okay, trigonometry. Okay, well, the first thing, 
uh, is they give you the ratio for, for cosine C. They don't give you the angle. But that's fine because when we use the formulas, we use the ratio, not the angle. So I'm looking at this and I'm going, okay, I really want to find X. And I know the ratio of this angle, that's the C angle, and the cos ratio specifically. And I've got three sides, one angle. That screams to me the cosine rule. Three sides, one angle, cos in it anyway. So cosine rule. What is the cosine rule? Well, it's the opposite side squared. Or you can use the other version with the angle first. Is 2x squared plus x squared minus 2 times this one times that one times cosine c. Now, cosine c we know is 3 quarters, so it's just times 3 quarters. Don't even need to put in the cos c. No, because cos c is 3 quarters. You can write cos c and then put in 3 quarters afterwards, but we're at that point. Okay. And then we don't have a calculator, but we can work out a lot of this. So we've got 100 is equal to, what's 2x to be squared is 4x squared plus x squared minus 2 times 2x is 4x times x is 4x squared. So 4x squared multiplied by 3 and divided by 4. Now it's 4 and 4, so these are cancelling. So you really have 3x squared. I'll just do another line. So I have 4x squared plus x squared minus 3x squared. So many x squareds do I have? 4 plus 1 is 5. Take away 3 is 2. So I have 100 is equal to 2x squared. So what's x going to be? Well, divide by 2, 50 is equal to x squared, you know. And then x is going to be the square root of 50. Do I take the negative as well? No, because it's a distance. I just take the positive. Square root of 50 is x. No, I, I read the question then. I, I give your answer the area of the triangle. So the area of the triangle. The area of the triangle is going to need me. This is one method of doing it. That's about right, yeah. Uh, the next place to get a mark is to look at the area of the triangle formula. So the area of a triangle, which is given in the formula booklet, is a half a, b, sine c. Now, I only have cosine c, but of course, we know how to get from cosine to sine. Well, we do, but I think we all forgot. Most of us forgot. If you have cosine and you want to get sine, you get a right angle triangle. Call it whatever you want, c. I know that the ratio is 3 to 4 of the adjacent to the hypotenuse. If I want to get the sine of the same angle, I can just do Pythagoras' theorem and I'll get this one. 4 squared minus 3 squared square rooted is that one which is 16 take away 9, which is not 5, someone wrote 5. Square root of 7. Square root of 7. So, what you did, then you got 3, yeah? Yeah, but like, I can't remember what you did next. So sine C is root 7, the opposite, over the hypotenuse 4. Be quiet, yeah. So it's root 7 over 4 is sine c. Now that's what we needed here. So that's just root 7 over 4. A half. A and b then are the two sides either side, oh, two sides either side of c, which is x and 2x. Two. So that's why I needed x. So x is root 50, and 2x is 2 root 50. That's x and 2x. Some people had some version of this. I got an attempt mark for it. And multiply by sine c, I just found sine c, it's root 7 over 4. Now let's manipulate this down as much as possible to get it in some sort of square root form. Just tidy it up a little bit. Root 50 times root 50 is 50, isn't it? And 2 times a half is 1, so it's 50 root 7, all divided by 4. Because multiplication, this will be all over 1 and then it'll be over 1. Uh, I can tidy this up because they want 2 in the denominator. So I, well, divide everything by 2. So it's 25 root 7s over 2. Divide by 2, divide by 2. And that's it, 25 and root 7. So I was pretty close to 3 root 7 over 2. Was it just 22 off? <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, not far. Yeah, you're probably the best effort on it. Okay. Where was R? Where did you see R? No, no, I mean like on the mark you mark R. Recognition that you recognize something that was. Uh, yeah, it's integration by substitution. Yeah. <coughs> All right. You got a straight up mark if you just realized this was, you need to do integration. Awesome. This is a derivative, and if you want to go back to find the function, you got to integrate. So I got to integrate 6x over x squared plus 1 with respect to x. Um, your integration skills were mixed, to say the best. Um, a lot of you did use integration by substitution, realizing that this is too hard to integrate by rule. We don't have any rule to deal with this. You can't separate. Even separating the terms won't derive it. You just integrate it? How would you do it? Okay, so u is x squared plus 1, the higher power of x function. du over dx, the derivative of that is 2x. du is equal to 2x dx. Why am I doing this? Because I want to make it look like 6x dx. So I can substitute it in. It's not 6x dx, but it's close. It's 3 times less than 6x dx, so I've got to multiply both sides by 3. Okay, so 3 du's is 6x dx. So that's 6x dx replaced with 3 du, and this has already been replaced with u, so I'm ready to substitute now. I'll just do it up here. Remember in the exam, if you write outside this box, it doesn't get marked. So a, a few of you, yeah. So a few of you just get extra page if you need more pages in the real thing. Uh, I didn't, I marked everything because I hadn't told you that, but. In the actual exam, it's right outside the box. It doesn't get marked. So note that. All right. So now I've substituted. So I have 1 over u from this bit, and then I have 3 du from the other bit. Now, 1 over u, 3 du. Well, you can write that as 3 over u du if you want. The same, same difference. Now, the problem with this is... We can do a rewrite if you want, 3 u to the minus 1 du, perhaps. But if I integrate this, which is add 1 to the power, that becomes 0, u 0. That's a problem. That would ring in my head that something's not quite right, because clearly it, we are able to uh, differentiate it to get there. So 0 is not going to work, because that will turn into a constant. What is this? 1 over u, 1 over x, integrates to what? Oh, ln. 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 So it's 3 ln u. You put the straight line brackets, plus c. That's it. Well, not finished yet. You got to put u back in and find c. That's it, yeah. But put u back in. That's it. That's it. That's it. Integrated. U is, uh, I called it U up here, X squared plus 1. Plus C. Yeah, it's got to be positive. The log has got to be positive. Kind of a negative there. There's no negative answers to logs. Uh, Why do I know this stuff now? I know, yeah. And, okay, so that's your function, but they gave you this point, which is the initial conditions, classic. Give a point to find C. Just find C. Find the constant of integration. So I know when x is 1, this all equals 5. So 3 ln 1 squared plus 1 plus c is equal to 5. 1 squared plus 1 is 2. So that's 3 ln 2 plus c is equal to 5. I'm going to go off the box, but c then is equal to 5 minus 3 ln 2. Now, if I saw that, and I did see that when I did it, and I went, this doesn't look right. But I checked it again, and it is. And it is the answer.
But if I got that in exam, I would be a little skeptical. That's why this question was hard, maybe. C is this. So what is the function? The function is this bit, 3ln x squared plus 1, plus now this for C. Uh, yeah, a difficult five mark question. But like getting getting this far is two or three marks. Like just even trying integration, getting some of it right. U minus one, I just changed my. Like, you went to plus one or something. Someone went from u minus one to u plus one. Uh, I have to go. I can't remember. Anyway, this one. All right, we don't know logs. That's fair enough. <laughs> Somebody did okay. Somebody did okay. Yeah, you did okay. The first part was answered okay. Also, I don't understand. Uh, the first question, there's three parts. There's seven marks. Is it two, two, three? Okay. Log 2, 1 over 16 is equal to what? This can be rewritten, of course. Log snow is rewritten. That means 2 to the power of something is 1 16th. That's its rewrite. So 16, I know, can be written 2 to the power of something. 16 itself is 2 to the power of 4, isn't it? So that's 2 to the power of something is equal to 1 over 2 to the power of 4. Now, how do I get this up here? Minus. So 2 to the power of something is equal to 2 to the power of minus 4. So what is it? Minus 4. The box is minus 4. So the answer to the first one is minus 4. Just minus 4. It is. So for, remember, logs is trying to find the exponent. You have the answer and you have the base. You're trying to find the exponent. Second one, if I go through the same process, log Base 3, 9 is equal to something. So 9 to the power of something is equal to 3. Now, perhaps you can just logic this out. It's the square root of 9, isn't it? What's square root in powers? Well, half. So half. It's just half. And the last one, log root 3. 81 is equal to something, so 3, root 3 to the power of something is equal to 81. Okay, well, what's 81? It's 3 to the power of, well, it's not 1, 2, 3 to the power of 3 is 27, 3 to the power of 4, 4, the one after 27, 27 times 3. So, root 3 to the power of something is equal to 4. What's the power, what's root 3? 3 to the power of a half is equal to 3 to the power of 4. So a half of something equals 4. 8. So a minus 4, a half, and 8. 7 marks. 2, 2, 3. Uh, okay. B. Yeah, I can see why you think B was impossible. Yeah. B was quite difficult. This, 4B was the hardest question in the exam, between the two papers. I know you're going to get that, though. Oh. I've written it wrong. Log AB A is equal to 3. Okay. So we need to think about a way to show that then Log A, B, B is equal to 2. <laughs> yeah, I might, yeah. Uh, I don't think anyone had any good ideas here. Oh, you maybe. <coughs> what was your ideas? B 
squared equals to 1 over a. a b squared equals to 1, and a b equals to 1 over 1. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so a couple of ways you can go about it. Um, first, first way I tried to go about it, which was a bit too difficult, was do this. A, B to the A is equal to 3 log A, B, A, B. And then you get a cubed up here. Um, and there is a way of getting to minus 2, but it's a bit difficult. And then the second way I did it was... This is an easier way. If I don't start off with this, but I start off with log a, b, a, b. Just that in general. What is that equal to? Log a, b, a, b, one. Okay, start with that. Then use the, re the log rule in reverse that if I multiply these two, they can be separated. Log a, b, a plus log a, b, b is equal to one. Opposite log rule. Why does this help? Because I know that log A, B, A is 3. This is 3. So 3 plus log A, B, B is equal to 1. Bring over the 3, and that gets minus 2. No, it's not. So that was the easiest way to do it. There is a way of doing it the way you were doing it, Briac. You didn't quite get it with with because you get a cubed b cubed is equal to a, but it gets a bit messy. This is the easier way. Yeah, not easy. Okay, uh, part two then. Perhaps I'll maybe put down here. This is using the other rule of logs. So log a b the cube root of a over the square root of b. I'm just going to put this on a separate sheet, just so it's cleaner. OK. So division rule, and you would have got a mark for this, I think, if you subtracted them. Log a, b, root, oh, a cubed minus log a, b, root b. That's just that rule of logs that if they're divided, you can subtract them. Same as the opposite I just used. So then I converted the cube root and the square root into their fractional equivalents with the powers. So a cube root of A is A to the one third. The square root of B is B to the half. Why did I do that? It's because I want to get this down here. Because I know what log a, b, a is. It's given. It's, we found it out earlier on. It's, it's, it's minus 2, or it's 3. Yeah, so this is 1 third using this rule of logs, log a, b, a, minus 1 half log a, b, b. Why did I do that? Because this I knew was 3 from the start of the question. Now, you could have done this without the other bit because it was to show that. So you had the answer to log a, b, b as well, which is minus 2. You could have just attempted this as well. I think this was easier because it just was using the rules. But you're thrown off by the first one, which I, yeah, I can understand. So a third of 3 is 1. A half of 2 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. Especially you didn't expect, you expect that question to end with 1 plus 1 is 2, did you? The last part you got, yeah, the last line here. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Okay, I marked it for you. So, okay, I found three, so it's close, right? So I feel like I should get one mark. You found three? Yeah. Three. Uh, no. No, you're out of luck. All right. This was supposed to be answered on the other page, but. It's okay. Um, most of you marked it on this, and I'll do it on this as well, because it's easy to visualize. Uh, Write down the axis of symmetry. If it's outside the box, we should get multiplied. 
Yeah. Well done, Briak. All right. What is the axis of symmetry? It is the line down the middle of the graph that it can fold over. So it's a line down through here. It's going to be x equals something. It goes through the vertex. It's got to be x equals 3. Because it's 3. It's, given, it's there. It's the point. Yeah. And some of you were like, oh, minus b over 2a if I multiply that out, which is true. And once you found a, you could go back and do it then later. You did find a later on. But most of you did the minus b over 2a, forgot about that, and then never went back with the a value you found. Yes, Brian. Write down the equation of the axis of symmetry. Yeah. I thought we were only supposed to write down like minus b over 2a. Oh, that is the equation. That is the equation. It's like that's kind of a confusing question. Yeah, take it up with the ID. I'm afraid I didn't learn my question. You get nothing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So another thing we know is that this is the vertex form, which means H and K is the bottom point. This is H and K. So H is 3 and K is 4. Uh, the next one is, okay, knowing all that, I have a point, Q, so this point here is 5, 12, it's on the graph. Um, I can just sub this in and find A, and I'll do that down here. Okay, so I'm going to put in 5, 12 into this. So 5, 12 is my point that satisfies this equation. So that means 12 will get out when I put in 5. 5 minus 3 squared plus 4 instead of x and y. Um, yeah, 5 minus 3 is 2. And at least one person did got that bit wrong. 12 is then 2 squared, which is 4. 4a plus 4. Subtract 4 from both sides, get 8 is equal to 4a. A has got to be 2. Okay, a is 2. Wait, so I feel like you can't just scan me on this one. Oh, I said minus the correct Yes, it was you, Gabe, yes. Yeah. Okay, so I got 12 equals to 8 by minus 3 squared plus 4. I'll look at it after. I'll look at it. I'll make a note, I'll come back to it. So there are any problems, I'll check your paper after. Okay. Part C. So now I know the function is 2x minus 3 squared plus 4. That's the function. Great. L is a tangent to the function. Find the equation of L. Now, if it's a tangent, it's, it's, it's here, yeah? It doesn't go through 3, 4. Otherwise, it would go through this, the 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 uh, curve twice and wouldn't be a tangent. Tangent is only going to go through once, so I can't use three four. How on earth do I get the slope of this line? How on earth? Oh, the slope might come up. Uh, no, no. Why? Is it? I don't have enough to go on. I can. You can start off y is equal to m x plus c and sub in five and twelve, but you don't know c or m. And this is classic cross topic question. No. How do we get a gradient to a curve at any point? Derivative. Get the derivative. Yes. Sub in five. What's the slope at five? So f dash x, I need the derivative. This is chain rule. Multiply down by 2. All you know now. Okay, so that's the derivative. I just did the chain rule really quickly there. And at 5 will give me the slope. So 4, 5 minus 3, the slope is 8. So the slope is 8. So now I can use my y is equal to mx plus c. I know the point is 5, 12. I know the slope is 8, and I'll find c. <coughs> so 12 is what? 
12 is equal to 8 times 5 plus C. 8 times 5 is 40. C is equal to minus 28. So my formula or my equation of L, Y, 8X minus 28. So most of you went about trying to find the slope with functions methods or coordinate geometry methods. And you were wrong. Yeah. Okay. All right, question five, six. Vertical and horizontal asymptotes. All right, so a line going this way is vertical. How do we name a line that's vertical? It's x equals, because it goes through an x-axis at a certain point, and that's its defining property. So vertical is always going to be x equals, and horizontal is always going to be y equals for a start. All right, how do I find them then? That's a different kettle of fish, just in general, horizontal and vertical. Okay, so these refer to like numbers that can't be, Ten years. yeah, numbers that can't be. So how do we get these numbers? What number can X not be? It cannot be minus one. Minus one plus one makes a zero at the bottom, so that's minus one. We did that from X plus one cannot equal zero. The denominator cannot equal zero for the vertical asymptote. X is minus one, done. Horizontal asymptote. You take the coefficients, horizontal asymptote. You take the coefficients, two and one, two over one, two, two over one, the coefficient of X and the coefficient of X. Yeah. Wrong, wrong, wrong and wrong, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, you got a mark for the first one, and the second one you just got wrong. That's for the second mark. Okay. Yeah. You wrote them the other way around, didn't you? No? What did you write? <laughs> Literally not. To say x equals to 2 is a lot different than to say y equals to 2. Right. x minus 1 is the line that goes this way. That one. y is equal to 2 is this way. Why am I doing this? Because I'm going to draw this graph. I need to be able to recognize what functions look like. Stefan. I need to be able to recognize what functions look like. It's a rational function. Is a very peculiar shape. It does this thing, doesn't it? It's not a quadratic. It's not a cubic. It's not a sine function. Rational functions have their own unique look. Some of you, rec most of you recognize that. What do I need? Well, clearly indicate the asymptotes. I already put them in. The position of any points that intersect the axes. Lisa. Any points that intersect the axis. You've got to get the x and y intercepts. Pretty straightforward. Let y equal to 0 to find the x ones. So I'll do that. Here's my function. y is equal to 2x minus 1 over x plus 1. When y is 0, what's x? Um, so if I multi multiply, let's put it down here. When I multiply up by this, that just equals 0. So 0 is equal to 2x minus 1. 1 add one to both sides. I think you get x is equal to a half from this. So that's the point. A half, zero, that's definitely on my graph. So a half, zero, here. <coughs> and then find the, the y-intercept. Let x equal to zero. y is equal to two times zero minus one all over zero plus one. Zeros are gone. Minus 1 over plus 1 is just minus 1, so y is equal to minus 1. So I have 
Zero minus one is my other point. Zero minus one, that's here. Sure. Yeah. 2x minus one divided by x plus one. If you multiply up to the zero, you end up with nothing. Oh. Yeah. So it has this shape. And it approaches the asymptote, but does not touch. It's that shape. And how do you find the y <coughs> Let x equal to zero. X equal to zero all along the y-axis, so by letting x equal to zero. Yeah, which is, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's it drawn. Solving the inequality, where is this graph between zero and two? What x values work for this graph between zero and two? So I'll just put this. 2 is here, 0 is here, so what x values work between there and there? What are the values between there and there? Where does it start? That's a half, that's a half. It starts at a half and goes to infinity. There is the answers to that. Where is it between 0 and 2? From a half on. It sticks because it goes on forever and ever that way. So C is X greater than a half from, from visualization. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> it's a one mark question, so it had to be something you already kind of knew and could just read off a graph. You didn't have to calculate it algebraically. It has to be something you're able to read off the graph. You could try and calculate algebraically. All right, last question. Basically, if you didn't notice something here, you just weren't going to get it right, which is a bit, a bit like the, uh, the logs question. And nobody noticed it. You'll, you'll notice it if I spell it out to you, which I will. Um, GX, FX, which one goes into which? G goes into F. G goes into F. So everywhere there's an X, I put in 2X. So if you just wrote F O G, everywhere there is an X, you put in 2X. Root 3 sine 2X plus cos 2X. That's two marks. That's the done, just done. Your ability to sub that in, it's just two marks. Yep. Yeah, that's right. That's correct. That's it. It's done. Is it two marks? Yep. <coughs> you sub it incorrectly? Yeah, I sub it with a sign. But you said two marks. It was all or nothing. All or nothing, I'm afraid. Um, okay, next part. Whatever you just got, let it equal to 2 cos 2x. So root 3 sine 2x plus cos 2x is equal to 2 cos 2x. Third question. How many exactly does this method Excluding this. I don't know, about two, yeah. Okay. Will you get a mark for writing that down? This, no, because it's kind of, it's a given. Yeah. Fair enough. If you made some correct step after this, you would probably get a mark, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to subtract it over there, because root 3 sine 2x is equal to then 2 cos 2x minus a 2x cos 2x. Uh, so if I have two of them and I take away one of them, I'm just left with one of them. It's equal to just cos 1. Okay. This is kind of where you might stop and try and use trig identities, uh, which complicated things amazingly, but... If sine and cos are both there, there's always a chance it could be what? Tan. Tan. Because oh. sine divided by cos is tan. So divide both sides by cos 2x. That becomes root 3 tan 2x. And cos 2x over cos 2x is 1. If I divide both sides by root 3, tan 2x is 1 over root 3, which is one of my known angles. 
One over root three, tan. What's one over root three? Oh, oh. oh that's a... Uh, uh, radius. Radius. Yeah, radius. Yeah, it's 30 degrees, so pi over six. Yeah. So, 2x is equal to pi over six. Now, that's not the only answer, of course, because... <coughs> Where else is tan positive? First one, yeah. Which other one? Third, yes. So what's the one here? What's the angle here as well? So I got pi over six here. What's, what's pi over six? Seven pi over six. Now if two x is equal to pi over six and seven pi over six, what's x? Divided by two. Divided by pi over twelve and seven pi over. 